Hello, you are listening to Travis Pepper Mentoring a Moron, the podcast where we test out new things to watch, read, listen to, and be inspired by, so you don't have to. Today is the finale of season two, where we present our top picks for this season, so if you're new, I say go back and catch up from the start of the season, and we'll meet you again after your binge. But for the rest of you, it's the beginning of the end of season two. Enjoy! You sometimes feel like a moron Don't worry, we've got one too Because we're not that clever But we make it all up With our can-do attitude So if you like a bit of banter With me and this old wanker We've got just the thing for you We've got lots of content and it won't make sense. It's the Travis Pepper Show. So every time that you've recorded video, you've just been recording your own face or oh. my own face. <laughs> Mate, it's been a part of shit. I don't know how I've not managed to like, like, I don't 24 know episodes. how I've not managed to figure it out. 24 episodes. We've been doing this now. 25? This is 25. This, yeah, this wow, is 25. Okay, okay. We've done 24. Yeah. So by now I would have expected you to be able to uh, sort to out the be video. Able to do it. <laughs> do you know what? This is this is a little bit of a milestone because we're 25% of our target now. We've oh, made God. 25%. Now, if we count this as an episode, I don't know if this counts or not. I don't know. Does your episode on your own count? I've counted it. Yeah. But... Well, then, yeah, this definitely counts because we're both here. That's like twice okay. as successful as your one, I guess. <laughs> Go Travis Pepper show. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Mm. Um, 25th episode. It's, it's a good one because I've not had to do any homework this week. So not something we're strong at when it comes to this podcast. So one thing I do want to call you up on is why were you too good to join us this week? Why were you better than us on Saturday night? I had other plans. And what was so important? Are you in lockdown? Are you? Nothing's important. That's the point. It's just first come, first serve. First, yeah, ah, okay. first come, first serve. Yeah, first come, first serve. Yeah. So I've got is no that you, priorities. Is that you work no with important. Women in as well. Yeah, basically. <laughs> we, were ta- <laughs> we, 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 we were talking to... Um, first come, first serve. Yeah. <sighs> for, first person to show any form of affection just wins my heart. Done. We discussed this. Okay. Because we, discuss, we were discussing okay. what, um, on holiday, what animals... Uh, would be like what's our personality I think you were just like a generic were we chimp yeah, I, yeah. no generic chimp generic chimp man. man chimp man um, where, where was I in this conversation because I don't probably not paying being, attention we were walking I around definitely the don't town. remember being generic chimp for sure okay maybe I just have you down as a generic chimp if you were to be an animal <laughs> fuck you <laughs> <laughs> well mine I, was mine it, was puppy but not any specific like breed of dog but specifically a puppy because short mm. attention span likes a bit of attention will show unconditional love to anybody who like feeds him or yes. shows, him, shows him affection. Um, yeah. Easily distracted. It's all adds up. Again. It's all adds up. You, yeah. you would do that thing as well that if you like pretended to throw something, you'd like run after it. Where's it? Where's it? Where's it? <laughs> like, a, oh, oh, a hint. <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't a hint. <laughs> But Cameron, Cameron was there on Saturday, which is why I thought that you might, you know, attend because he's somebody that you like to run around after like a little puppy dog. So. Oh yeah. Good example of a puppy. No, this, yeah. no. Uh, but he, he did give me grief for not showing up to, to our little, this little Zoom thing. Um, yeah. So basically what end. we're talking about is we had a Zoom call. We had a Zoom call this week. Um, I don't know why, really. I, I, I don't understand why. Well, but... We started to have Zoom quizzes at the beginning of the last lockdown so i think some one of the group just went oh well let's just do another one a little anniversary one because <laughs> we're going into another lockdown so yeah i don't like them at all these zoom quizzes they pissing me off now big time um how did you do ma- i came last again okay <laughs> this is the reason <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so, I'm sure everybody else cheats. Honestly, I've come, I've come last. I remember the week that I thought I'd smashed it. I'm like, I have, you know, most weeks I'm like, oh, okay, if I get off the bottom, I'm going to be happy, <laughs> right? Um, and there was a week that I smashed it, and I came second from bottom. In my head, I was like, I've nailed this week. When did quiz. you think you smashed it? 
Uh, Becky's quiz, I thought I did pretty well. Queen of Sneaks. So her quiz, I thought I did pretty well. I got like 13 points. And then the winner got like 16 or something. Do you remember hers? Was <laughs> it that was the very last close one that was. Yeah. And yours, I was killing yours. I thought I was doing really well. And then you threw in right at the end, put all of the Avengers movies in the right order. No, that wasn't when... me. That was that was your brother. Oh, I aced that. Okay. I, mean, okay. I, I I did the really nerdy thing, which was they, he said, right, put all of the Marvel films in order. And I started writing them all down in order. And then I looked up and went, oh, they're written on the screen out of order. Okay, cool. That helps. But I'd already started writing them down from memory. That's how much yeah. I knew I was, how See, well I knew and, I was going to do. Prob- the problem with that quiz is there was like 30 points up for grabs in that one question. Because how many, how many Avengers film or Marvel films are there? There's 27, I think. Right. So there's 27 points up for grabs in that round, right? Uh, which was pretty much double the rest of the quiz. And I had fucking no hope. I didn't even get the, the ones that he gave us. I didn't even realize he'd put them in order. So I got them wrong as well. Oh, yeah. You, <laughs> didn't you have like, the wrong the, amount? Like they were he, he all gave, written yeah, there I and did. had a different total amount of movies. So he, so he gave us the first and the last one. So the minimum I should have got on that round was two points. I got one point. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, so I'm dude. sick of Zoom quizzes because they just remind me how much of... Um, you started it. No, I didn't. I didn't start the quiz thing. I, mine, you were the mine first was, of our group to hang do quiz. On. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> mine was um, more fun though. Like my, mine was like run and get things and design little characters. I asked you to. Mine was the creation of Albus Dumbledore or whatever he's called. I got you to make. Mascots. I got you to make people mascots. I got you to make mascots out of things, and you put a tie around your microphone and called yeah, it Mike, Mike Tyson, Tyson. Right? Yeah. That's fun <laughs> stuff that everybody can do. I also had the. Um, what did I have? Uh, was it the uh, who has, who's got the biggest tits? That were thing where you had all the women, but you couldn't see their boobs, and then you had to pick one. That and was then awful. You had to guess that the one. Was... <laughs> no, but that's and... fun. Stuff like that is fun because everyone could do it. Everyone. It was like, oh yeah, it was. <laughs> like, but then, oh yeah, where is this country? It's, oh, it's only bullshit. funny if everyone can do it. Okay. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. 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 This is how you're measuring um, the fun of our podcast because everyone can listen to it. You don't need everybody to be qualified listen to listen to, to this podcast. Talking about listening to the podcast and everybody that listens to the podcast, I was told off last week for calling said human being a whore on podcast. I got in trouble. So who I referred to one of I referred to one of your friends as a whore uh, last last week on the podcast, and I got messaged about it. Um, all in good all in good faith, though. She actually said that because we were talking about oh, said yeah. conversation. <laughs> we were talking about the conversation last week. Let's do a reminder. We were talking about the yeah. conversation last week of me at your birthday party saying I was going to be a good friend by not hitting on your friend, and then I did hit on your friend. And you were talking about how you had previously stole that same girl from Anza. And then I circulated that you were a shit friend. Well, I asked in the podcast last week if we're talking about the same girl across all yeah, three different yeah. situations. And then I referred to her as a whore. Um, <laughs> to which she came back and she said something along the lines of, I had to ask you about, I think it was something to do with you giving Anza permission to date her. And she was like, I was just approached by him. And it was like this awkward um, oh yeah, James has given us permission to date, and she no, was like, "No, no, I, don't, I can't, I can't, I can't I don't. go into this. Like, I can't talk about another person like, in that way." <laughs> no. Wow, I got a load. Of, I got a load of spiel from in this kind of thing, and basically, somehow she kind of managed to go through all the di- different scenarios, break them down, and the conclusion that she made was that we're the whores, which is probably actually accurate. I would say. I don't know. Are we the whores in that situation? In that situation, no. Well, so she's no. still the whore in that situation. No, no. Well, don't sit on the outside fence, of, Travis. Outside of the situation, that's true. But I think in this situation, you're not. I might be because of the whole stealing. I'm not. The... I've got away with it. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll give you credit where credits due. Um, why? Why am I not the whore? Well, because 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 you very very politely what? requested to hit on my friend and then. <laughs> Did it anyway, so that's not that's not being a whore. That's just being a shit friend. So what nothing, is, nothing whore. Is a whore? 
A whore, is a whore is a prostitute, darling. What is a... Oh, somebody that... that... Oh, sex for money. Yeah, yeah, okay. So just to confirm, no, there's been no exchange between anybody <laughs> in this. Just to confirm for anybody that's listening, I don't think... As, as far as I'm aware, there's been no exchange of money that's taken place for sex. Um, Correct. It's just a toy boy. That's about. all. So, ten. <laughs> You're funny. Um, <laughs> do you want to know where I've been today? Do you remember where I've been today? Are you are you that good of a friend that you remember what's happened to me today? You don't have a clue, do you? Have I told you? I'm sure I told you. No, I just found out that you're busy when you it, when you suddenly message it's me. Relate, it's related to this. Have you? Well, you haven't had an operation on your nose if you've just done that. <laughs> No, but I went to the, I went to the, now this is, okay, so this is, this is, I shouldn't admit this because this is classic moron. I went to the hospital. <laughs> I went end, to the hospital end as we, today. End as we've always proceeded, <laughs> you know, carry on. Good, sir. I, I went to the hospital today, right? Check this out. This is true story as well. I'm not even playing up to the, for the podcast. Um, I went to the hospital today for an appointment that I thought was related to my nose. Um, so, mm-hmm. cause I've obviously, my nose runs a hell of a lot and they think that, I don't know that, well, it might be allergies, but basically they're looking into why my nose runs. Um, <laughs> great content for the listeners. I know. Um, it's like I a Mr. Men's this... book, Luke and the Nose That Runs. <laughs> Luke, Luke and the Nose That Runs. So I went to the doctors thinking I was going to get my nose checked up and then was confused when she started sticking stuff in my ears and was like, uh, what about my nose? Like, should I take my mask off? And there was this whole ordeal that she got really confused. And ultimately, it was never related to my nose. I was going to the hospital to have the checkup on my operation that I had in January. But because because I'd rang the doctors recently asking them if they'll look at my nose, I just assumed that that's what they were doing, which they weren't. <laughs> they, weren't to, they're not, they weren't doing that at all. Jeez. So I went there. And you apologize I for being a moron. I discovered that my operation didn't work and I still have a hole in said ear. So uh, I, had a, I had an operation in January to plug up a hole, a permanent hole in my eardrum and the surgery hasn't. Well, it's a good Hasn't job you didn't go job. swimming. Yeah, not in August. Exactly. Yeah. I didn't risk it, did I? I said yeah. I better not risk it just in case. And mm. uh, yeah, good thing I didn't. So, good man. Yeah. B- good been boy. to the hospital today. Been to the hospital, had a Zoom call. What else has been happening? Don't know. Let's check the calendar again. <laughs> got, we got. Um, I got my stepdad. Oh, mate, you'll, you'll, I don't know if you'd appreciate it. You might, might find this funny. You might not, but um, we got my, got my stepdad a um, birthday present mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because it was his birthday. Um, oh, really? Recently. Right. I, sh- what do you mean? Oh, you got him a birthday present for Christmas. Did you? Oh, well, no, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and traditionally, we, me and my brother are not very good at birthday presents and uh, we right. got, we got him a little, we got him a little, I think, I think this is really funny, but it's one of those things where it's probably not funny. Um, probably. and there is a backstory. He's really into his fishing. Um, uh-huh. and we got him a little trophy. It's like a little fishing rod, which is gold. Um, uh-huh. and it's, and it's got a little plaque on it and the plaque on it says seagull catcher of the year. Because this year when he was fishing, he actually caught a seagull. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so he um, he went fishing this summer with a guy called, who genuinely, you look this guy up, he's called Stainless Steel Steve, <laughs> this chap. So my stepdad went fishing with Stainless Steel Steve. Stainless, Stainless Steel, Steel Steve. Yeah. And, and Stainless Steel Steve is the captain of the England fisherman team legit story as well i'm not even i'm not making this up so stainless steel steve is the captain of the england sea fishing team and so my stepdad who's also called steve went <laughs> fishing with him so you had two and steves you know he's you now stepdad known as, steve. uh seagull swiper steve so you've got seagull swiper steve and stainless steel steve yeah obviously like there's this he's like oh yeah we're going to go fishing my stepdad was really into it because he was like stainless steel is legit fisherman. You know, he mm-hmm. does GB fishing. So this is quality. 
went down, saw all his rods. He got his tackle out, did all that kind of stuff. And, um, they -hmm. went down to do some sea fishing and, um, my mum was sitting with stainless steel Steve's wife. (laughs) So they were sitting having a glass of wine while the wag, the wags, the the wives and girlfriends of the fishermen, the wafts, the wafts, wags, wafts. Um, They were sitting having a glass of wine. Mm -hmm. And my mum was like, I don't know why I spotted it, but she was like, I just saw this like fishing line going overhead and just looked up and was like, is that, is that their fishing line? And ultimately what had happened is my stepdad had gone to cast his rod. He'd cast <laughs> the rod, <laughs> caught a seagull mid flight with the, the, or the seagull had swooped and got the bait. And then the seagull had flown off with said rod. So apparently you had stainless steel, Steve and my stepdad go like running off over the sand dunes and uh, try to unhook this, um, this seagull from seagull from the rod. So w- we got him a, we got him a, a trophy, trophy for it. Had. That's, that's seagull, pretty good. That's successful. The, uh... I mean, if you would imagine deliberately trying to hook a seagull with a fishing rod, like slim chance, Couldn't do it twice. Yeah. yeah, and he's just gone and just gone and done one. Should have played it off like it was deliberate. Just yeah, no fish catching, so I decided to go for uh, seagull for dinner instead. <laughs> yeah, seagull. Didn't fancy find fish. it quite. <laughs> It just made me laugh that like he's gone with this this bloke who legitimately is the captain of the England sea fishing team. Mm. Um, it just adds <laughs> stainless, adds to the stainless steel. Just adds Steve. to the st- stainless steel Steve. Yeah, just adds to the like embarrassment when you're like trying to impress somebody and then you catch seagull. Um, so yeah, yeah that, was bir- that was birthday presents. I've got off. loads of bit. I've got loads of birthday presents this season. You got your book. I need to post that to you. To be fair, oh yeah, That's I've got good. a trophy. I'll pin it. Have you have you been doing anything? Anything interesting happening in Sausage Land? No, Travis Cooker came out uh, this weekend. Oh, did he? Yeah, I see that on your Instagram actually. Yeah, you know when Travis Cooker's out. Travis Cooker was my alter ego from season one. Uh, just put on the apron. Episode and the three. Wow. You, you listen then. <laughs> I don't listen. Uh, yeah. And so I think, um, it's my alter check. ego to get things done around the house. And so he came out the weekend and we cooked a big, big old meal for Halloween. Really, really nice. So uh, yeah, the podcast is benefiting real life at the moment. Just throw on the apron yeah. and become the new me. So, but yeah, apart from that, it was quite interesting because after we had, um, last episode was the last, uh, episode of, uh, reviews. And so we've got nothing to review this week, but what we're going to do is we're going to look back on everything that has happened in this week. Why are you so excited? Because I was right. Oh, Season right. one, episode three. What awesome. is a vegetable extravaganza? In this episode, Travis reveals his alter ego. Bang. I'm well chuffed with that. <laughs> you have like a tally, like you you have a printout of all the episodes just hung up on uh, like a poster in your bedroom. You no, check it I don't. Day. But but do you know what? Talking about that, right? This, you know, you were just introducing the fact that we're going to do the top things to watch, read, listen to, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um I've basically copied your homework this episode because you make you make the little descriptions for each episode and that's been really handy for me to sit and go <laughs> and go back through and be like, what have we listened to this week? Um, yeah. So I've, bas- I've basically copied off you. I, I, I use those as well. Like if I'm trying to get, remember, you know, oh, okay. what did we actually do last week? And I scroll back down and they- go, oh yeah, I've got to add that one to the Instagram. So uh, yeah, all these They're good. Little, little, little highlights. They- do you know what did take me by surprise? Mm-hmm. I didn't realise how early in this season we were imbued. I didn't realise it was it was episode four of yeah. this season. Mm-hmm. I don't. I, that's crazy to me that we've come back from imbued and done eight episodes. We've done eight episodes since. Yeah, it's been like that, two months since then. Yeah, fucking mental, isn't it? Absolutely bananas. That said, um, we've only done only two books have made it into the uh, <laughs> recommendations for this uh, season. So uh, it's going to be easy picking a highlight for that one, I guess. So uh, 
Yeah, I was just looking over what actually uh, I've looked over what we've done. Okay, but then I've looked over like what actually made it in, and okay, not not, not as much as I thought made it in this. So season. the two books that made it in are going to be Shoe Dog, mm-hmm. and because you can't remember the other one, that kind of shows what your highlight's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how it's just... <laughs> You knew by the look on my face, didn't you? You just uh, yeah, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah shoe dog. Uh, shoe dog's a great book. What was the other? What was the other book that we put? We in? talked about it last week because um, we were talking about what's required to get into the recommendations and it was feel the fear and do it anyway by suzanne jeffers and it made it that went in did it yeah it went in because it's got a little action plan as well so okay fair enough i didn't think that made the cut because i thought that was a bit like legacy i thought it kind of we liked it but we didn't do enough to put it in Uh, that's Um, the thing i thought we we discussed it last week we felt that feel the fear and do it anyway had a bit more of an action plan and a uh, um bit more hands-on yeah, but do you know what? Because I listened back to last week's episode and uh, just to kind of fight my corner, I, I, I sounded like a bit of an idiot and obviously shock. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> shock, Luke sounds like an idiot again. Um, <laughs> but you said about that and I said, oh, you know, um, I think legacy, I kind of said something about like expands more. And you were like, well, I disagree because feel the fear and anyway, ha- feel the fear and do it anyway, had an action plan and da da da. And then I was like, oh yeah, you're right. The point I was trying to make is, um, which I didn't make was like legacy covers like loads of different concepts. Mm-hmm, whereas mm-hmm. feel the fear and do it anyway, talks about getting over fear and yeah, it dives deep. More specific. It dives- That's what I was trying to get at, but I didn't communicate well. You shut me down and I went, oh, yeah. (laughs) I'm an idiot. (laughs) Yeah. So so should we start with our favourite thing to read? Do you reckon that's a good place to start? Yeah, cool. So, Shoe Dog, moving on. Um... (laughs) No, mine's not not Shoe Dog. Um, is, Is yours also Shoe Dog? Well, we've only put two things in. Feel yeah, the fear and do it anyway one. in Shoe Dog. Okay. Well, this is going to be anticlimactic. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. It's Legacy! Oh. <laughs> no, it's not. It's, it's Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. <laughs> oh. I was going to say. It comes around yeah. as an underdog. No, yeah. Uh, Shoe Dog. Yeah, I... I to be honest, the two books I really, really enjoyed from this season, one of them didn't make it in, which was the um, I Am Pilgrim. So the two ones that I actually were hooked on and wanted to go back to and read uh, every time I had the opportunity were just, um, yeah, I Am Pilgrim by Terry Hayes and Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. But of course, Shoe Dog made it in. Um, so this out of the uh, ones that were in the recommendations, that's my top for this season. Shoe dog. I am Pilgrim. Why did I am Pilgrim not make it in? Because you didn't read it. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it doesn't make it in, does it? Well, you have got to review it, and you've been calling it shit all season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. I recommend but, it, but I think it's shit. Yeah. You know? No, 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 no. I'm not saying that I recommend it, but what I'm saying is, if I haven't read it, then does it give you this little veto, this little loophole in the Travis Pepper rules where? by because i haven't done the homework you have the authority to say i'm putting that in there um fuck it it's going in yeah it's going it's going in the recommendations now it's a last last minute what it was episode one it came up uh no it came up at the back end of season two because we were supposed to back end of season one because we were supposed to read it on the on the the summer holidays the idea was to have it done for episode one yeah so which you didn't do i just like to quickly revisit that bit um Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the, so. the episodes titled that Luke didn't do his homework. You couldn't yeah. have made it any fucking more obvious that I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Like what with it, all the other episodes, do? my homework yeah, with all the right. other episodes. Right? If you look at all the other episodes, the the title of the episode is usually around based around the content. He- 
AKA, can you overcome fear? Should you prioritize drums before hoes? Do aliens exist? Is Facebook controlling you? Are we fucking the planet? All related to the content. Episode one, did Luke fail his homework assignment? Brilliant. <laughs> well, I guess it's related to the content because you didn't bring any. So, yeah. <laughs> There's always a loophole. But yeah, I think if you want to put that in there for all of the avid... Um, did Mr. Tickle not make it in? That's hilarious. No, did we you actually said no. Him? You, 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 you were adamant. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> to be honest, that is, to out be of fair. all of the Mr. Men books, yeah, it, it's probably the probably the worst from from what I remember. That's funny. Okay, so Shoe Dog, um, do you want to give a little like? Do you want to give a little bit of an explanation as to why you made that decision? I'd be interested to know. Well, it, I, I'd say, so yeah, like I said, it was basically clear that, that I kept going back and kept wanting to be uh, read more of Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. Um, even though Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, you know, I read it all and we recommended it. Uh, I didn't feel, um, you know, drawn to the book like I was Shoe Dog. Uh, I felt like, it's a real story, but it's entertaining. It's, it's, you know, theatrical at points. You kind of have the Phil Knight himself doing things that you'd only imagine the main character of a TV series to be getting away with. Like, no, no double crossing, but all of the uh, um, lying to people in order to, uh, saying that he had stuff set up, which he didn't, and then trying to get it set up. And the conversations that he had with some of the other characters like characters, they're people. I, I did this last time when I was reviewing it. Yeah, yeah. I kept calling them characters, and it's because he 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 highlights their characteristics quite easily, and you follow them as if they're characters. Um, so yeah, not only is it uh, enlightening, informative, but it's entertaining and it's interesting. So for those reasons, that's why Shoot Dog is my highlight for this season when it comes to something. You've to gone read. you've gone really in detail there. I wasn't expecting that much. Which you just you said dance monkey and I danced. So. Yeah, you did very well. Like I'm very I'm very impressed at how you how well you danced. To be fair, um, Thank you. I was just expecting oh, I kind of liked it, um, which is like what I would probably say. But no, I'm um, I'm glad that that's been the one that's gone in there. I've crossed it off my list. Um, mm -hmm. I think the order that we should do these in is I think we should go watch, then okay. listen. And then most inspirational because I feel like, listen, we're going to argue about. So we should get the arguing done. No, save it to the end. Okay. Cool. I like building, the, I like building the tension. Okay, cool. So we'll, <laughs> why do we keep wanting to end on a sad note now? <laughs> well, we're ending on most inspirational. So hopefully we'll swoop back in last minute. And it'll be like one of those films where you have the scene just before the end scene where everything's going okay. wrong and they're like, they're not, they're not going to meet up and fall in love. And then bang, it happens. Okay. And so roll credits. So to confirm in the inspirational, we have, uh, one, two, three, four, five documentaries in the inspirational column. And then we have, um, Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I don't, I don't work this way. Sorry, I didn't realise that that was the rules. I thought the inspirational person could come from anywhere. We could do it that way as well. I thought it was watch. I thought the documentaries were in watch. <laughs> this is what this I ran past yeah. you. This is what I ran past you saying. Did every, you? Is it, yeah, I said, is everything in the when? right category? When I started organizing everything by listen, read, watch, inspire, putting them on the Instagram, I said, is everything right? And you went, yep, yeah, cool. And I went, Luke, no, nope. is everything right? <laughs> I was definitely sure because I knew you weren't paying attention. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I was oh. going to say, I didn't, I didn't know that's what you meant. I didn't know that. I just, I just thought you said that you'd restructure everything and that you were, you know, doing it differently. Um, <laughs> Sorry, that's my fault. No, well, I, I bundled anything that you watch into watch mm -hmm. and then I I allowed myself. So, for example, Phil Knight could be the most inspirational thing from the series in my eyes, right? That's okay. 
that that's the way my rules I mean, have been last learned. time but, we disagreed so much on the inspirational people that we did take someone from another category and put them as the most inspirational exactly. person. So I Here feel we like we're more than welcome to break the rules this time. Okay, um, that's cool. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Um, so what I've got watching. down as something to watch is I have yeah. got the four films, Nightcrawler, Whiplash, Green Book, and The Grand Budapest Hotel. We got Russell Brand's stand-up comedy, Messiah Complex. That and, was funny. And then we've got the documentary Fear City, New York versus the Mafia. This is what I've got in watch for us. Mm, okay. <laughs> okay. So what's your what's your what, what's your what's your favorite watch of the season? Well, this is the thing. You, I recommended all of the movies to you. So right. there it's kind of they're new to you, but I I love all of these movies. I could I could probably pick the best one to recommend to someone. Um and that would probably be Green Book as the one I'd recommend most to people. It's not my favorite movie out of all of them. My favorite is the Grand Budapest Hotel. But Misha Gustav. Michel Gustav. Yeah. Hello? Are you well, Mr. I... Gustav? Are you Michel Gustav? Um, I, for me, the most, uh, the best thing to watch was just the thing that I sat there and I was like, fuck, this is madness. And I was glued to the telly. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's probably obvious what that was. Um it was extinction the facts for me. Right. Like that was the thing that that really got me. So if 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 you're gonna say what's the thing that you've watched that what have I watched this season that if anyone's mm. listening, I would say go and watch. Yeah. For me, it would be extinction the facts. If you want me to give you something from the list you've just talked about, then I would agree with you. Green Book was also my favorite film. Mm-hmm. So if you're gonna pick a film out of those ones then Green Book would be the one that I'd go for. Um, but I just I just think if somebody said to me, what have you watched in season two that is just like you, I, I, should, I should sit and watch. Mm. I'd be like extinction, extinction, the facts. David Attenborough. Because David Attenborough is smoking hot for 90 years old. That's what gorgeous, what gorgeous man. Yeah. Oh, talking about 90 year old, Sean Connery Sean died yesterday, didn't he? Bless him. Hmm. What a way yeah. to go, though, right? That's the way to go if you're going to go. I don't know how he went. What? Uh, he just fell asleep. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's the way to go, isn't it? Like, can you imagine getting to 90 years old, going to sleep and never waking up again? That's the dream, isn't it? I mean, I don't necessarily wake up excited for it, but yeah, I guess that's the dream. Well, how else would you rather die then? Well, I don't if usually wake choice. up thinking about how I'm going to die. I'm just so you close to so death. so softly. <laughs> I'm just so close to death at all moments. So I'm just like, yeah, it'll probably be some allergy reaction at some point, but let's not think about that. Let's think of all the food that we can eat. That's fine. It literally would be a peanut. Could one, could, if I threw one peanut at your head, would that is that enough to kill you if you didn't have if if i'm across the room i've taken a shot and a peanut has hit you square in the forehead and you've not got an epi pen what's the situation there it's only if it goes in my mouth so if i manage to shoot it in your mouth from across the room yeah then yeah then it's death instant yeah. death by nut so hang on if it's only in the mouth why the hell were they clearing out peanut butter and stuff from the chalets when you were there because if you use a knife and share it with someone else then i die and then it ends up going in my mouth it only has to be like a tiny bit like a part a couple of particles couple of particles of peanut butter because mm. i can remember was it was it peanut butter or was it nutella that they were getting rid of i don't eat nutella anyway so Both i wouldn't them. be worried about them kill me so I feel like we're getting sidetracked now and we should bring no, this I'm back. Just... So I could, I could eat a bag of nuts in front of you though. Yeah. You oh, can't well, kiss me. But afterwards. then, but th- I can't kiss you afterwards. So 
what about if I rub my finger in your mouth after I then, put it in bag yeah. of peanut butter? Yeah, and that'll then, do it. Yeah. That's also instant death. How long do we have to stab you? It varies on the case, but um, around within half an hour, I'll be dead. Within half an hour. So as long as we get you within half an hour, you're fine. So you, we can peanut well, no, butter I still and need stab to go you. to hospital because it still it might not work. Really? Yeah. Would you? Last question on this. Would you allow? Would you trust me with the um, the stabber? Well, I haven't taught you how to use it, so no. No. Okay. Well, do you know what? If see you lying there and you need someone, I'll put my hands up and say he doesn't trust me to do it. So fuck him. He's on his own. (laughs) Well, if it's just just the two of us, then I'll tell you how to do it. But until then, safety safety Sam's in charge. So you're, you're basically saying you don't want to hang around with me on my own. That's what you're saying. That's what you're saying. <laughs> if we're ever in a situation where you're my only option, then yes, I will teach you how to use. No, the I'd rather again. die. So it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd be good. I reckon. Yeah, you'll be uh, right. End up st- end up stabbing myself. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! What happens if I stab myself? I said last um, question, but this is the last question. Yeah, you'll get an adrenaline rush. If you've got a heart condition, you might have a heart attack and die. Yeah, that's, that, that, that sounds like our version of Romeo and Juliet. You've, 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 <laughs> you know, Romeo and Juliet, when one of them drinks the poison and the other one then stabs themselves in the heart. So I'm Juliet. Am I Juliet? Or, no, I'm Romeo. I'm no, Romeo. Romeo and you're had Juliet. the poison. Yep. Yeah. No. Yeah, Romeo, oh, so I'm Julia. Romeo's made himself it seemed No. So I'm Juliet. Oh, I'm, I'm Juliet. Confused. No, Ju- Romeo finds no, Juliet, Juliet wakes up. Yeah, Romeo finds Juliet uh, allegedly dead. He gets upset, yes. kills himself. She wakes up, sees him dead, kills herself. How does he kill himself? Uh maybe poison. No, I think he stabs himself because this is this is perfectly so. What's happened is Romeo kills himself nuts. by drinking poison. Oh, How okay. doesn't play does into my epipen? Juliet kill herself. Duh, duh, duh. She kills herself with a dagger. So yeah, you're Juliet. Yeah, I see. Now, okay. So, but Juliet's the the one that's asleep, right? Mm-hmm. So you get poisoned. That kind of works. You get poisoned by peanuts mm-hmm. and die. And you then wake I up. wake up. <laughs> I see that you're dead. And I stab myself with your EpiPen. And I've got I've got a pre-existing heart condition. Therefore, I die. And we yeah. have concluded our very own allergy, Romeo and Juliet. That's cute. And that would sure. be something to watch. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> that, that would definitely be in the recommended watch list. But we had a quality um, control just watching it happen and it'll get to the end when we're both dead and he'll go, brilliant episode. Brilliant. <laughs> 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 nice one. Um, so to go back to what we're going to put into Travis Pepper's well, biggest watch. See, I had David Attenborough and um, yes. Extinction the Facts as something to be inspired by. That was that's okay. what I've got written down, and that's what's currently publicly on our Instagram. <laughs> um, hang on a second. Most inspirational. I'm thinking of that as a person. Is that where I'm going wrong here? Yeah. Because I've got a list of people as my most inspirational. I don't have you, you like can just, you can just do your own podcast, mate. Like just just do your own episode. <laughs> I, I've got this. Com- oh, I've got this completely wrong because I've got David Attenborough written down in my list of potentials for most inspirational. Mm-hmm. So maybe this could all work out anyway, even if it's been done wrong. Okay. So, so, so should, should we do the most inspirational person then and come back to movies? <laughs> well, we're now, we're now, we're now skipping to most inspirational person. Well, most thing to be inspired by. Okay. So if we're going to thing to be inspired by, I've got Attenborough written as one of my things to be inspired by, cause he's just a fucking G man. He's done so much for the planet. Uh-huh. Hasn't he? Yeah. You know, like I, I have to admit, when it came, when I was looking at this list during this week, and I was trying to remember 
like which music I'd listened to, which book I'd enjoyed the best, which film I had liked when I, I, uh, I was watching it. When it came to inspirational, I did not have a moment's hesitation with saying that David Attenborough was the most inspirational thing from this season for me. So if we were to talk about the most inspirational thing, it would be David Attenborough and Extinction the Facts. And that's what I'd recommend to everybody. I'd agree. I'd, I'd absolutely 100% agree. I can't. I mean, the only other person I've written down is Claire Watkinson, mm -hmm. um, who was the girl that did the OCD um, yeah. documentary. And I thought she was up there as something to be inspired by because even though I didn't think the documentary was particularly well put together from a production standpoint, mm -hmm. I felt like it was a good message. And I felt like somebody at that age with the intent, doing what she was doing with the intentions that she had, you know, take, take away my perception of the quality of the documentary mm -hmm. as a, as a piece, her intentions and her, uh, aspirations to as well, to get her drive to get that message across inspirational, yeah. but when you've got a 92 year old that's saving the planet, that's hard to beat. And you know what yeah, I mean? I'd, to be honest, it's tough. If, if, if I were her uh, and being compared like as a close runner up to David Attenborough, I'd take that as a, a personal compliment if I'm honest. Yes. It's just yeah. me and you here on mentoring a moron doing it. And so <laughs> it's, it's not exactly it's not an accolade, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, you know, oh, if, I don't know if my, if dear, my mate, dear, dear, if, dear. if, if you said to me, it's like, James, I don't know who's cooler. Travis. Uh, Travis, don't know who's cooler. David Attenborough or you. That'd be a compliment. That'd definitely be a compliment. So uh, even if it just comes from cool. nobody. I think you'd be cool for different reasons. You and Attenborough. That is the most tactful response. Thank you very much. <laughs> but no, I, 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 I gen, genuinely do. Um, I'm just trying. I'm just trying to think it through. I think you would have more energy than him. Well, I'm against the 92 year old, aren't I? So, mm. yeah. Cheers, mate. <laughs> I, I think I think you'd have more energy, but I think do you know what? I I just think that I'd believe anything that Attenborough said. Do you know what I mean? If he if he told me that that this plant grew smarties. I'd believe it. I think I just, he's one of those people that's got so much, like he's got so much is gravitas the right word. I don't know. He's got this aura about him that if he just said to me, that plant does this, I'd instantly believe it. He's got an aura of it. competence, like the opposite mm. to the one that my friend has that I told you about, who has an aura of incompetence. Yes. He's it's a yeah, David, yeah, yeah. he's they're like polar opposites. David Attenborough David and, my old and your mate. Yeah. That's true. Do you think that when we get to 90, we'll be doing stuff like that? Do you think we'll even still be doing stuff like that? Do you think we'll be doing anything close to that? It's cool, isn't it, when you think about it? I'd probably it? be dead, to be honest, mate. What, 90? Yeah, 92. I don't know. People do live older than that. Maybe maybe when we're that age, you know, 102 is the new 92. You know. Maybe we'll still be doing this when we're 92. Maybe we'll push it all the we're way to 92. We're episode 100. <laughs> We've been going for 100 years. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened to your voice? Or is that me? Is that, what? Am I still... <laughs> What's that? Oh, is that you, Luke? Oh, hello. <laughs> the, only, the only voice I could do was the, the one that we had previous in this was the... Margaret! Margaret, yeah. I've shit myself. Margaret. <laughs> hello. My, mine was... Uh, hello, Is lovely it? lady. Did you know we have a podcast? Nobody <laughs> listens to podcasts anymore, Travis. Uh, you should... Uh, you, if you have an old copy of your radio, you should tune in. Oh, um, yeah, okay, Travis. Travis, um, where's Luke? <laughs> The care home staff are calling you Travis. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, Mr. Pepper. Mr. Pepper, where's Mr. Pitkin? Oh, I don't know. He's meant to be here, but he's still setting up his microphone. 
He's like, no, 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 Mr. Pitkin doesn't have a microphone, oh, Mr. Pepper. <laughs> 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 I don't know why that tickled me so much. <laughs> oh, it's just the thought of it. Oh, all those years later, you still looking after me, mentoring me. And then by the time that happens, I won't be coming bottom in the quiz. That's <laughs> <laughs> because the mentoring will have worked big time. <laughs> when the old people's home oh. do a quiz <laughs> and you're just like, no, oh, not doing what. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it because every time I lose. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> old you's gone oh. northern. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why, why are you hey, suddenly. Oh. <laughs> As you age, you move up through England. <laughs> <laughs> As the years go on, I, I, I take 10, I, I do 10 miles nor, more further north. You're, every, instead of being year. like typical Cockney, you'll be but then, <laughs> moving up Do you think I'm scouts. a Cockney? Do you think I'm, is that what you'd say for my accent? A Cockney? Uh, no, well, you're not as, you're not as, no, yeah. you're not as in it as Cockney. Oh. Not as dedicated no, to it. I wouldn't it. say. You're just landing -y. No, I'm definitely not a Cockney, but um, I've got a gnome. A <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're right. You're having a moment. Yeah, sorry. I think all that excitement about <clears throat> living in the old person's home has gone to my head. Yes. I think that would be pretty cool if we did that. We can get those sheltered accommodations where like, we have our own little flats. So like, you live across the way. Have you seen those? They're really yeah, cool yeah, now yeah. for old people. So like yeah. we can get as we can get as many of us if we're all still alive and still talking to each other in the same block, yeah. and then we can just be like we can be ninety and do weird stuff together. It's a good plan. Like make a podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we can keep <laughs> going with this. Do you know right. what would be really sad though? That if like when one of us dies and the other one then just does the last episode, would you do another episode if I died? I'd do one in memory. In, me in memory of more cheers bro yeah 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 that'd be good luke's still a dick right are we gonna do this or what we've got seriously sidetracked here today yeah. <clears throat> um i've so just got r.i pepper in my head at the moment <laughs> oh yeah r.i pepper yeah. um we have agreed that the most the inspiration thing to read oh right sorry the thing to read is shoe dog shoe by dog Phil Knight. The most inspirational is David Attenborough with uh, Extinction the Facts. With uh, Living With Me and My OCD, uh, close runner-up, isn't she? Uh, well, I wasn't, Honourable she mention. Wasn't that, she got a mention, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I wasn't like... It, there was no point in my head where I was going to give it to her. Do you know what I mean? I <laughs> just made a against, note. Yeah, honourable yeah. mention. It wasn't like... It wasn't like I was sitting there thinking, really kind of thinking it through and trying to be like, oh, which one? Like, it's clear. Extinction of Facts is great. Mm. Um, but she definitely deserves a little mention, yeah. Yeah. Sure. And then to watch. Now, going back to those, those, uh, those options of what to watch, which mm. one is it you said? You said. So, I mean... I also liked um, the minimalist stuff, but can that not go in there? It has to be a film, does it? Um, I mean, even if that were possible, I wouldn't put it in there. I wouldn't. Okay. I, would, I would. I would argue against that anyway. Because uh, I think Russell Brand. See, where does Russell Brand sit in all in your list of stuff? I think Russell does Brand he sits. It, he's. It, in this category is to watch, but I think Russell Brand kind of sits he's in his watch. own little category on his own. It's Russell Brand. Yeah, he's, he's, he's like, hey, you're right. Thanks, Russell. I'm... You just sit in the corner whilst whilst we do this, and and we'll we'll get round to you. We'll go out for a drink afterwards or something. Yeah. Because I would put him in something that I really like watching. Um, so the things I've got down: Green Book, The Social Dilemma. <laughs> And Russell Brand's The Messiah Complex. Mm -hmm. They're the three things that I've written down. And I don't know where I'd put it. Um, it's weird, isn't it? Because it depends what mood you're in. If you want to laugh, you go to Russell Brand. Mm -hmm. 
if you want something that's quite deep and meaningful, you go to Russell Brand. <laughs> you go to the green. <laughs> and if you want something that's going to change the way you live, you go to Russell Brand. Um, no, I mean... Actually, yeah. If Russell you want Brand some- wins everything then, I guess. Yeah. Want to watch and be inspired by? Yeah. Okay. So no. he's in. Um, no, but like... the obviously social dilemma is quite educational, but Mm. I probably wouldn't put it in there for me. It's a, it's a coin flip between Russell brand, the Messiah complex and uh, the green book. If I was going to Mm -hmm. choose a watch. Well, for this season, I would. um, So as much as like, I enjoyed Russell brand and I, and I do would still recommend it to everybody. I think green book's got a bit of, Maybe a bit of everything in there. It's deep, and meaningful. It's inspiring, and but also it has its funny moments as well. Uh, the 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 um, relationship between the two main characters is brilliant. We related to it as well when we were talking about it in our yeah. in our discussion. Um, I like a journey as well, and on a journey you got to have a load of laughs as well. So Green Book, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd say so you're going Russell Brand then. That you're going yeah, for. basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah <cool. laughs> um, that's fine by me. Put the green book in there. Right. I'm happy with that. Nice. So we've got Shoe Dog to read, Green Book to watch, David Attenborough Extinction, the facts to be inspired by. So So Ooh. what we've done is we've left the thing we're going to argue about till the end, which this you said exact- not to do. Yeah. <laughs> so here we go. Thing to listen to. Now, I think you're going to be bitter because after last week's defeat to the rag, the toys have come out of the pram and you're sour grapes about it. So I think we're going to struggle here. But um, well, this is this is the thing. This is the thing with the uh, like, I'm not bitter about not getting in the Travis Pepper playlist, but that's because my opinion of the Travis Pepper playlist has 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 changed. It's it, in my mind. I'm now treating it as music that Luke's likes that James has also said is okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's not true. Because what about what about um, what's it called? Things like uh, Don Broco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking of Death of Anna. Like Death of Anna, I'm like, yeah, that's cool. I'll listen to it again. But you like that as well. Yeah, true. You, you but this you, is this you're talking is... tribe. <laughs> well, you're talking just, tribe thing, because you cause... liked Mumford and Sons. No, it's more because because obviously I recommended you an album to for you to decide whether it goes in, and then the Rag recommended us an album. And you also get a say on whether it goes in. So you've you've had a say on both sides of the coin as well. Okay. I've always had a yeah. yeah. But you but then the flip side is you wouldn't recommend me something that you don't like. So every time you're putting something into the playlist that you like, because either you've recommended it, so you must like mm. it, or you've agreed that it, it should go in because you voted on it. Yes. So it's still music in there that you like because why would you recommend me something you don't like? Yeah, so it's only just an over... So, but the thing is, the way I've seen it is I've enjoyed many, many uh, parts of the music, but the music that's only getting in is the music that you like. Because I personally think I've got a very wide range and I've stuck to things that, you know, whenever it's been picking an album, it's like, oh, something that my- Luke likes. So, uh, which I've tried to not do towards the end of the week with... Um, Aurora um, at the end of that to just do one which was just generic but then yeah yeah but it's still stuff that we like because you have to have a say in it going in I can't I can't like crowbar something into the playlist that you don't like no but we also discussed that that we we approached it differently how we decided to put one in because yeah we said that because I was saying like oh it was a new experience yeah so the stuff in the playlist that i haven't listened to again since it went in but li- listening to it for the first time i was like oh that's cool and um, yeah see what i wanted with the playlist is i wanted something that i'd be able to put on and go i can listen to this because i like everything that's on here mm. would you do that no 
So what's the point in creating a playlist then? Because other people need to check this stuff out because it's interesting and cool. Okay. Yeah, you got me there. Yeah. I'm being selfish. I'm, I'm just thinking about what I want to do and what I want to listen to. Fuck it's anybody else. It's my playlist. It's not your <laughs> playlist. It's my <laughs> playlist. <laughs> the fact that I made it public to share with you doesn't mean it's yours. It belongs to me. Do you think you, um, just because you listen to it, it belongs to you? No, it's mine. <laughs> He's not the Messiah. He's a very naughty boy. Now go away. <laughs> <sighs> He's not the Messiah. He's a very naughty boy. Now go well, away. Can... Yeah. So, but we, it, it's a cool playlist. There's some cool stuff in there. And um, I've encountered some cool music through it as well. Um, so we've got, so let's just say what we've got this season. We've got... 14 Steps to a Better You by Lion Cordial, uh, Inform, Educate, Entertain by Public Service Broadcasting, Automatic by Don Broco, Back in Black by ACDC, Joy in the World Unknown by Ripe, Chiroscuro by uh, Ocean Alley, and Hypersonic Missiles by Sam Fender. So, yeah, this is what we've got to choose between. Um, I- I've only written one thing down on my pad for this. I'm pretty sure I know which one you'd pick. So, okay. But so yeah, I don't, I don't know if I want to just you know talk about some of the things that I enjoyed in the playlist, uh, or just be like, yeah, Luke, just pick 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 it. Yeah, cool. No, 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 no. <laughs> By all means, this is it because I'm the thing is right. I've written one thing down on this pad, right? Um, and it's remember to pick up milk. <laughs> <laughs> and I, <laughs> yeah and that's getting messy polish, now because people polish are, trophy for for um triple s seagull catcher <laughs> um the yeah people are bulk buying again here now because we're going back into lockdown on thursday so it's like the shops are the shops are rabid again wild mm. people just stealing stuff um looting um, no, I've written one thing on this pad because I am open to discussion, but mm-hmm. I, the music is the part that I know the best in the sense of like, it's the bit I get into the most. So okay. I can, I can, I can, when you were reeling off the albums, I could have remembered all the albums, but like you said, there was, there was what, two books and I couldn't remember one of those two yeah. books, okay. but I knew, I knew all the albums, if you get mm-hmm. me. So I've written one thing on my pad. I'm not, I'm open to negotiation, but I, I obviously believe in my decision. Okay. What do, so, you think, what do you think I've picked? I think you've picked 14 Steps to a Better You by Lime Cordial. 100% correct. Yes, yeah. I have. Um, <laughs> I, knew, I knew this. I knew this. Like, I mean, from the you, moment, how did you know that? I knew this was going to be like the top album for you of the playlist when I first listened to the first song on that album because I'd recommended you um, Automatic by Don Broco. Also really confident. Album. And it was because the rag missed one episode that meant that you were reviewing both of them at the same episode. So as soon as... No, no, no. It's because it was week one. It was week one in the competition and I didn't realise how much work it would put on me. Week one oh, right, was Don Broco Automatic. At the same time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay, then we it. did one week and then I was like, I can't carry on like this. And they yeah. both got in that week. Yeah. So I, rem- I remember being like, I was pretty confident about Automatic and, I, and then like I heard the first guitar jangly indie chord from 14 steps to a better you and i went oh fuck this is going in <laughs> yeah and like like you probably won't even be able to do a fair review of the don broker album because he'll be so engrossed by this other album oh fuck yeah um yeah, yeah so i think yeah. i knew from that moment this was going to be like a top but you, but you know the the, like we like we spoke like last week about Super Love when it's got the ba ba da ba da ba da bam like that yeah. I was hooked on that album from there in as well like the first mm. week I was like this is gonna be an epic like season of music because it was just like bang bang two bangers of an album like straight off, um, but yeah that is yeah by I mean for me that is where I would vote um, I also really like Sam. I also I had I had to consider Sam, um, because uh-huh. I that album really surprised me. You know what you were saying about kind of you summed it up very well last week when you said about uh, uh, the Hunter. You know, having a couple of tracks that are banging. 
Mm. What's it? She likes it or whatever. She's she casual likes it and she's bonfire. casual and bonfire. You know, the same kind of thing with Sam Fender. I was a little bit like, where's this going to go? I think that album has got a hell of a lot of really interesting stuff in it. Mm-hmm. Um, I really liked Lime Cordial's album. That is the one I would vote for as my front runner. Um, Ripe are good. I think as an album, it's not good enough to win mm-hmm. but i think the sound is good you know what you were saying about check go and check it out you know go and check it out go and listen to it mm. um i don't think as an album it's got enough in it to cut the mustard um personally mm-hmm. okay so and then you've got don broco as well and i so like the don broco album for me it's two seconds close. actually sorry uh, we, we've got ACDC as well, haven't we? Yeah. I mean... Fuck, I, I, I didn't, didn't, think, didn't think about ACDC. Yeah. Is I that mean, the top, diffi- top, it's difficult top when... most selling album of all time? Is that? No. Mm, that's probably... I that's bad by Michael Jackson, I think. Um, okay. Um, it's difficult when you've recommended some and you've reviewed some. Because obviously the new ones stick with you more. And of course, so because... Dude, it's, listen- it's not. Sorry. It, apparently it's the Eagles. Oh. Eagles yeah. Greatest Hits, 1971 to 75, is apparently the top most selling album of all time. Second is Michael Jackson with Thriller, apparently. Thriller. Eagle Eagles Hotel California is third. ACDC Black in, ba- Back in Black is fourth. Mm-hmm. Then it's the Beatles, then Billy Joel, then Led Zeppelin. Good for them. <laughs> Just had to fact check you on it. I never yeah. would have said the Eagles, if that's true. 50 no, best neither. selling albums of all time, the Eagles. It's obviously sorry, that I think we... about it, but... But I was where saying... Where are you going? I'm oh, sorry, I was saying... The, um, uh, I, I wouldn't put... As much as I love the Back in Black by ACDC, I wouldn't put it as a highlight of this this season. It wasn't it wasn't an experience to show it off, and it wasn't an experience to listen okay. to for the first like first time. I understand. Whereas, um, fourteen steps, Chiroscuro, hypersonic missiles were a thrill to listen to for the first time, and Joy in the Wild Unknown and Automatic were things I was really excited to share with you and get your opinion on. So. Those are all still fresh. Um, I, as much as I like to inform, educate, and entertain by public service broadcasting, but it, it's background music to me. And I can't, as much as I enjoyed it, and I'd recommend people putting it on, I can't give it like a crowning. Uh, I can't give it a, a step on the pedestal, uh, to be honest. Um, mm-hmm. Hypersonic Missiles by Sam Fender, I was pleasantly surprised of how good it was. Uh, I enjoyed it, and it's made me think of some other albums as well that I kind of like of that genre, and it's going to make me go back and listen to that kind of music again in a bit. Um, But I didn't think it was, even though they they were... Bangers, well written, uh, great production, nice lyrics. I didn't think it was uh, completely substantial. It wasn't. I wasn't like blown away. I was, as I said, pleasantly surprised. So that didn't. Um, uh, that I, w- I wouldn't have put him in the top of those. So then I'm down to the four. Um, Automatic what four left. So. Automa- Don Broco, Lime Cordial, Ripe, and Ocean Alley. Uh, okay. Don Broco, I'm so happy that you enjoyed it. I like that that's a uh, little crossover between us as well. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still I don't get why top... you thought it was American because he has the most British accent. He talks like you. Um, like, so I don't understand how you thought he was American because he Did sings I think with... that was American. Yeah, you said okay, he, he came up with this American voice, and I was like, he's got the gobbiest cheeky nando's voice i've ever heard so <laughs> cheeky nando's <laughs> exactly um so i mean i was so happy that you liked that uh and you like that a lot i've listened to it again a few times since as well yeah and i and i went back and listened to it and i appreciated how good of an album it was so i was really happy with that and the production um seeing them live and everything but then um 
yeah i'd like to go see them with you i think it would be good fun but yeah then i started then i started thinking about uh you know join the world unknown by ripe just loads of songs on that album just do something to me and they along with chiroscuro um have the most songs that are in my listening now playlist on spotify and so i've gone back to them a load of times both of them equally um Mm -hmm. chiroscuro was surprising um and yeah that was i i think that was my most passionate review on this podcast was my review of chiroscuro what surprised me about chiroscuro is that you liked it. I was adamant when I listened to it that I was like, I love this album, but I was like, Travis won't like this. And when you came and said early doors and you were like, oh, usually I kind of like leave, leave it to mm. the end, but I'm going to just say, say straight off the bat, I was expecting you to go, I really didn't like this album. And you were like, I loved this album. Mm. Um, it was... But for me though, I think they're very good album. Like the, the, so, so what, what are we down to now? What are you, what are you saying? Are you, you're saying well, Lime Cordial and Ocean Alley. Is that what you're saying at the moment? Ripe, Ocean Alley and Lime Cordial. Chiroscuro. So Chiroscuro for I'm go, me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to veto Ripe. I don't think it's good enough. I really okay. don't think it's good enough. Um, well, Chiroscuro, to me, that genre, I think all bands in that genre should want to release an album as good as this. And then no one has to release any more albums in this genre. Like, you know, the, I think the reasons why you thought I wouldn't like it is probably there are a lot of artists with very, very similar sounds that I don't like just because I don't think they've written songs that are good enough. But the songs written by Ocean Alley in this style were bloody amazing. But Lime Cordial was more away from my taste than anything that Mm -hmm. I've listened to. Uh, But again, I said it when I first reviewed it, the product, the attention to detail, the production that they've put on it, um, all these little um, uh, ideas that they've got in the songs that just kind of, uh, you know, it's the difference between having a meal that tastes good and a meal that tastes good presented well um, looks nice, great atmosphere. So not only were they great songs, but they were very well arranged and they were really catchy and they had me dancing to them. So I've taken you on a, like a long, long roundabout here to get to this point, just because I wanted to give credit where credit's due to all of the other albums that I really enjoy. Yeah, for sure. And the ones that I put in there that were great. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, I would also say that probably my highlight because of how surprising it was and how impressed I was would be 14 (laughs) Steps to Value by Love Cordial. Yeah, come on! Yes! (laughs) Why did you do that to me? (laughs) Just because I like to make you sweat. Yeah, you're such a little tease. You make me feel all like, oh yeah, you picked Lime Cordial, haven't you? Like you're so yeah predictable, and I'm like, oh yeah, but oh yeah, you picked the easy album. I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh, but I like it. <laughs> I like it a lot. I mean, that's your that's your excuse to like for everything that goes in the playlist. Here, you're just like, but I like it. So, do you know what's really funny is that literally, like, you've guessed you've guessed everything that's been written on my pad pretty much like you you've done this like dance around like why you've chosen what you've chosen and you've gone yeah you've written down shoe dog and you've written down live cordial <laughs> like, you just know not you've already known what i've got on my sheet i knew i knew um, that you were going to if you had to pick a film you'd pick green book if you have to pick an uh, inspiration person yes. you'd pick david attenborough film that yeah, yeah I, I i knew all you of knew. yours before this play before this episode yeah, it's funny, isn't it? I should. Why is that? I sh- I I should have. How did you know? How did you know what I was going to pick? I should. Do you know what I should have done? I should have got you to take your headphones off. Yes. Go out of the room and just recording myself saying, "So this is what Luke's going to pick." And yeah, I, next I, I, next I, season we'll do that. We'll do that. Yeah. Next season we'll do that. <laughs> we will remember <laughs> next season. Um. So. Yeah, but do you know what? Just to quickly recap, like if I was to say like Sam Fender, Hypersonic Missiles, Don Bronco, Don Broco, Automatic, Ripe Joy in the Wild Unknown, Lime Cordial, 
uh, 14 Steps to Better You and Chiroscuro Ocean Alley. Five great albums that we've discovered this this season. Mm. Five, and I would say they're all wicked albums that are worth listening to. And our king or queen or album of the podcast. I don't know why I said king or queen. <laughs> it's Lime Cordial. 14 Steps to a Better You. And I'm chuffed that that's the case. That's good. So to conclude... All of Luke's favourites got in to the top recommendations of season two. Yay! Green Book. Um, David Attenborough with Extinction the Facts. Shoe Dog by Phil Knight, uh, the founder of Nike. And 14 Steps to a Better You by Lam Cordial. So well done. It's everybody, good. go have a listen. Enjoy. And we'll see you soon for season three season three when will we see them we will the see people. them bam, bam, bam. just kind of just kind of for me bam. as well so i know because i'm gonna we're doing that I'm thing where we're planning, do some pla- planning the uh planning the podcast during the podcast yeah we'll just quickly give me a date yeah we'll see them on the 2nd of december second that's weeks away Oh, One, I miss two, you already. Three. Four weeks. Four weeks of no Travis Pepper podcast. Okay, crazy. All right, man. It's been a blast. So, sorry, do you want to do the recap one more time? <laughs> this might as well end it on the recap. The recap's a good part to end it. I don't know why I jumped back in with the whole. He's like, we're like, we recap. Yeah, good night. Oh, by the way, Jay's <laughs> Travis, <laughs> what, what are we doing? What are we doing next week? What are we doing? Oh, oh, God damn it. Oh, Luke. God. Have I got any, actually, before you do the recap one final time, have I got any homework to do over the summer, the summer holidays? No, no homework. No, no just homework come back to do. So ready, just come raring. back, ready, fresh faced. Cool. Yeah. So it's been a pleasure, but for one final time, Travis, what are <laughs> our top recommendations of this season? Travis Pepper's Mentoring a Moron proudly presents for season two, 14 Steps to a Better You by Lime Cordial, Shoe Dog by Phil Knight, Green Book, and David Attenborough presents Extinction, The Facts. That's me. Well done, sir. I'll see you soon, mate. Take care of yourself. Ciao. And uh, I love you. I love you lots. Take care. Have a good break. Bye. It's the Travis Pepper Show. Thanks for listening. If you like what you heard, then please follow us on Instagram to keep in touch. And also follow us on whatever streaming platform that you're using. You could also leave us a review if that's possible. It doesn't even have to be good. Any review will do. Just tune in for the next episode here at Travis Pepper, Mentoring a Moron.